As a professional photographer, presentation is everything. Build your own website today with Squarespace. From my concepts to my creations and straight to my website. I'm Carl Taylor and this is my Squarespace. I want to talk to you a little bit about making color adjustments to images. Now, um, as with everything, before you can really adjust something or uh, manipulate it, you really need to understand a little bit about the process or a little bit about what it is you're dealing with. Now, when we're talking about color, um, especially in uh, photography, in uh, raw file formats um, or displayed images on screen, we're generally talking about images that are made up of red, green and blue. Um, if we're talking about images that are destined for ink production, as in printed, litho printed, uh, commercial printing, uh, we'd be talking about inks that use cyan, magenta, yellow and a black ink. Now I think it's important to understand a little bit about the colours themselves uh, and how they interact or what colours are opposite to each other uh, before you can um, really start to manipulate those colours uh, and make adjustments. So let's have a look at this uh, graph here um, where we've got uh, the primary colours. Now here are the colours of red, green and blue. Now these are the three primary colours and those colours, if they are merged together in equal amounts, will make pure white and they make white light. Um, if we want to look at each of those colours independently, let's say for instance red, uh, you need to know what the opposite colour of red is. And the opposite of red is cyan and then the opposite of green is magenta and the opposite of blue is yellow. Now those opposite colours are our secondary colours uh, which we can also use to make colour adjustments but essentially we are manipulating our colours on uh, raw files or on RGB files in Photoshop in the red, green and blue channel um, by increasing or decreasing each of those. Um, so understanding the uh, colours and, and the opposite colours to each other is a very important part of the process. So I suggest that you uh, learn a little bit about colour, read some more information about that. So if we wanted to actually uh, affect the colour on this image, um, I would probably do this using curves and with the curves panel I can uh, affect the image by going into each individual colour channel and applying an adjustment. So if I go with red, I can increase the red there. You can see the red increasing. But at the same time, I'm actually increasing the brightness of that um, particular um, curve. So therefore, the image has got lighter at the same time. And in the opposite way, if I take that red curve down, I'm increasing the cyan, if you like, but darkening the image at the same time. That's useful to remember because sometimes you might find that once you've made an adjustment like that, that you may then need to go back to the actual RGB combined curve just to lift it back up a little bit as well. So if we go back into the individual channels, uh, let me just go back to the red, let me just drag that one away, go back to neutral. If we look at green, I can add green in, uh, take green out which will make it more magenta. So those are those opposite colours that we spoke about. Um, you're seeing that happen here with the curves adjustment. Now it's possible to use curves for making color adjustments. Um, there are some other features within Photoshop such as uh, just a general color balance for making color balance adjustments. Um, if you're going to use curves for uh, adjustments, it's actually um, better to do it on an adjustment layer and choose the curves adjustment and then do it here. And then you're actually doing it on a layer above the main image not affecting the actual image itself and then you can reduce the opacity of that layer or you can use a mask on that layer to blend parts out and blend bits back in. Um, within the adjustments um, palette we can also bring in things like the hue saturation 
adjustments and the hue saturation will let you make an overall um, sort of global adjustment if you like to the um, tone of the image uh, running through the hues of the spectrum and also increasing or decreasing the saturation of your image and again by doing it on an adjustment layer you have the ability to use a mask and then decide whether you want to selectively keep some of that adjustment or remove some of that adjustment. Now that's looking at it in Photoshop uh, but as I keep pointing out it's much better to make these adjustments on your raw image file where possible. So let's just step out of Photoshop a second and let's just go into a raw processing software. Uh, here we are in Lightroom and if you have a look here we can actually um, see um, the series of um, color adjustment points here that allow me to manipulate the color. Hue, saturation and luminance. So on the subject skin tones here there's actually a selector point that you can use in the raw software and you can click on that and then move the point directly over the skin tone or the color that you want to adjust and actually operate it like a slider. So I can click on it and then I can slide and there we've made her into a Martian into a green looking rather ill or go the opposite direction and we've made a very sunburnt, very red. So you can see the color sliders sliding because what's happening is that the raw software has identified the color that we've picked and is selecting it automatically uh, by you uh, operating it in a slider function. So that can be really quite useful. I could then select a different color, not that there's a great deal of color in this image, um, but I can affect other colors independently. Unfortunately, that color there was very close to uh, the main color, um, but maybe the color on the lips, let's just click on that. We can affect that, so now it's still too close to the other tones, but you get the idea that by actually selecting the color within the image and operating the slider will allow you to manipulate the color um, by that method. You can still manually control it by adjusting the sliders. Here we were adjusting the hue, but we could also adjust the saturation. And then there are further features in RAW, a little bit more precision in adjusting the split toning. That is by uh, separately adjusting the highlight tones or the shadow tone colors. And um, then as well, your main adjustment at the top that you should um, take care of before you commence any further color adjustments. And that is to set the actual color balance, your white balance correctly and we have your color temperature slider which will cool the image down or warm the overall image up and the settings that you use there are uh, largely uh, determined by the color of the light and the lighting conditions that you were working with so if you were shooting in uh, daylight conditions or you were using a flash strobe that's daylight balanced then your color balance uh, should be in the 5000 K um, area. So that's an overview of color and how you can uh, make adjustments on that to help you understand color a little bit more. My passion is photography. Whether shooting for clients or teaching students, the excitement of great photography never gets old. Check out my website for free training, a complete range of courses and even photography workshops. Thank you for watching.